Hi guys, today I'm going to be making a cheese burst garlic bread. So, this is much easier than it looks and trust me, it is something that you're going to love making. I'm using 50% whole wheat flour and 50% maida to make this. Best is to knead the dough directly onto the platform. So, I'm adding both my flours and then make a well in the center. In this well, you add instant yeast and sugar. Here I have some warm water, it's lukewarm water. Just make sure that your water is not super hot, otherwise you're going to kill the yeast. In case you're not using instant yeast and using dry active yeast, you will need to activate it. To activate dry yeast, you need to sprinkle it onto warm water along with sugar. Start kneading the dough. When the dough comes together, add softened butter. Make sure that your butter is soft and start slowly incorporating the butter into the dough. At this stage, you can also add the salt. Slowly you will see that the dough starts coming together and it will no longer stick to your hand. Cover the dough and rest it for 5-7 to seven minutes and then start kneading it again. Test for the window pane test. For the window pane test, just pinch a little piece of dough and start stretching it. If it tears just like now, then you have to keep on kneading it. Usually, it takes 10 to 12 minutes to knead a nice soft dough. You see that the texture has smoothened and the dough looks much, much nicer. I'm just going to sprinkle a little bit of dry flour and check for the window pane once again. So, for the window pane, you just pinch a small piece of dough. Slowly start stretching it out. When you poke it from the bottom, it will not tear. That means the window pane and the kneading is just appropriate. At this point, you need to ferment the dough. This is called first fermentation. So here I have greased my bowl with some oil, placing my dough onto it. And now I'm going to be fermenting it until the dough doubles. Now coming to the cheese burst. We're going to be making the filling. I have some cheese and milk, which I'm microwaving for about 30 seconds. Mix it up and just keep it aside. Make sure you do this just before you're going to use the filling. It took nearly 90 minutes for the dough to become double in volume for me. So here the dough has doubled and now you have to lightly punch the air. Make sure you're not over kneading the dough at this stage. Just lightly punch out the air so that the dough again deflates. At this point, you divide it into four pieces. This depends on the size of bread you want to make. So I have just divided into four pieces. I'm going to be making one right now and I can store the rest of the dough in the fridge and use it later. Start rolling it out. Make sure you're not rolling it super thin, but also don't roll it super thick. I am keeping the thickness to about half a centimeter, rolling both the pieces out. Make sure you pinch it well. You can use some dry flour to roll the dough. This is looking absolutely perfect. Both my pieces are of the same size. Now, I'm going to be transferring this onto a parchment paper. Sprinkle some flour, place one piece, stretch it out. Just ensure that the dough is even. Now, you need to prick it. Don't miss this step. This is very, very important. Prick the dough and spread the cheese mixture onto the bread dough. For making one piece, I use nearly two cheese cubes. While spreading, leave a rim around. Don't spread it all through to the end. Now, I'm covering this with the second piece of dough that we rolled out. Now, you start pinching the edges and making sure that it gets sealed. I am crimping it the way we crimp the gujia. This is absolutely optional, you don't have to do it because when you will ferment this, the shape and the beautiful crimping will disappear but this does ensure that the dough gets sealed perfectly. The next step is very important, always proof the bread onto the final baking dish. I'm covering it and keeping it aside for fermenting. Now I'm making the garlic butter. For the garlic butter, I took some melted butter, added some grated garlic, coriander and some chilli flakes. Mix it all up. 
After 90 minutes, my bread looks ready. It has doubled in size. I'm brushing it generously with the garlic butter. Just ensure that you have brushed it all over. There is a thumb rule for baking bread. Never bake the bread unless and until it has doubled in size. So now this looks ready and now it's time to bake it. I'm baking it in a preheated oven at 200 degrees Celsius for nearly 20 minutes. It's 20 minutes and the bread is ready. I'm brushing it again with some garlic butter. This is optional. Cover the bread and keep it aside for nearly 10 minutes before serving. After 10 minutes, it's time to serve the bread. I am serving it with a nice cream cheese dip. You can serve it with anything you like with some pesto or enjoy it with some soup. So I hope you guys enjoyed watching today's recipe and will make this very very soon. Whenever you guys make it, please don't forget to tag me. This looks absolutely beautiful. The cheese has melted perfectly and this technique for cheese burst is perfect for even a pizza. So next time you want to make a cheese burst pizza, use this filling.